the pipeline from serving Jesus because your parents taught you to, to serving the Lord on your own is so beautiful. I always think I have a boring testimony because I was born in the church and my walk just blossomed on its own. But the moment you have like a fear for your parents and what they'll say because they're Christian to developing a fear of God or reverential awe of God is so different. Realizing that living through my parents' faith won't fill the voids in my own life. Like Jesus wanted a personal relationship with me, not just my parents. And that lets me growing in obedience and that lets me growing in intimacy with God. He's so intentional. And it doesn't even have to happen this way. I know a lot of people who grew up in the church and they've gone away. So to have that moment where it's like, I don't want to do this for my parents anymore. Like I want to know God for who God is and to love him so much and a thousand times more than my parents, of course. No shade. It's the duality of witnessing the light and the darkness of the world and being able to choose Christ, die to self, not serve two masters. And I'll teach my kids the exact same. Growing up in an abusive household and also growing up a Christian, my relationship with my mother and my relationship with God, they were both really similar. You must listen to everything that they tell you because everything that they tell you is supposedly for your own good. Can't question anything that they ever say because like I said, it's apparently for your own good, even if it's literally hurting you. And if you tell anyone that this relationship you have with this individual is hurting you, they either don't believe you or tell you that you need to get closer to them to understand them better and why they're doing what they're doing. You're just confused all the time. You never know what to do, what to say, what's happening. You're kind of just like going with it every day. They'll literally punish you if you ever try to call them out on some shit, like ever. And everyone around you tells you how lucky you are to have a relationship with this person or being. Even though you literally wake up every single day hating yourself and wanting to unalive yourself all the time. My mother used to ask me all the time, I don't know why you're so depressed. I don't know why you're hurting so much. I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know what's wrong in your life. Bitch, you! You are what's wrong in my life. With God, it was the same fucking shit. You are what's wrong in my life. That's why I'm not a Christian and I don't speak to my mother anymore. Because both of those relationships were insanely toxic for me. There's no such thing as a perfect Christian. To be a Christian doesn't mean to stick your head in the Bible 24-7, read as many chapters as you want daily, write 3,000 words on one scripture, go to Bible study every single day of the week, preach your religion to every single person you see, and sit without making a single sin, without a single mistake. There's no such thing. There were so many rules based in living for the Lord. You start feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to change everything. But how could I possibly change everything overnight? It is actually impossible for me to not mess up sometimes. I began to get discouraged because I'm like, the Lord has literally set me up for an impossible mission. How am I supposed to do all these things? Something in my life is always going to be struggling. Whether that's my faithfulness in a certain area, I'm spending as much time with the Lord, the way that I communicate with others, how I love others, I'm never going to have it perfect. It's never going to be linear. I'm never going to achieve this. So why am, I, why am I trying to work towards this? There was this weight and this pressure that I felt that I couldn't put into words. And I remember being on the floor in the bathroom one night just like sobbing because everything in my heart wanted to pursue him. But it felt like everything around me, even the body that I was born into, wouldn't allow me to progress like I wanted to progress so that I could be worthy of the things that the Bible was talking about. And I just heard him say so gently, he said, you were never meant to be perfect. He said, this was all here to show you that in spite of your imperfection, I still chose you and I still love you. I know that you're never gonna get it right. I know that you're never gonna be perfect. This unrealistic level of perfection that you think I've placed on you to achieve. He said, that's false. Rest in your imperfection because this is where I meet with you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another video, and I am here to talk about a topic that I think could resonate with a lot of people, especially people that grew up in a religious household. And that topic is the pressures of trying to be the perfect Christian. This is a 
topic that I've seen floating around here and there on TikTok and on Twitter of people who grew up Christian, which that's the perspective that I'm going to be speaking from. I'm not sure if, you know, any of the things that I've gone through or other Christians have gone through, if that can also relate to other religions as well. So if anything that I say speaks to you and your religious background and upbringing, please let me know in the comments. Um, But speaking as someone that grew up in a very religious household, you know, you know how it goes, right? You know, growing up, you go to church every single Sunday. The way that you're raised, the way that you're brought up is very by the Bible, right? And anytime that you go against what is in the Bible, you are immediately condemned for it. I've seen people switch religions. I've seen people say, you know, forget religion altogether because of how extreme that environment can be growing up in the church, growing up in that, in the organized religion type of way. Because there's often a lot of pressure put on you to be perfect, to present yourself a certain way all the time. And there's also a dynamic that happens with people that are older and people that are younger, where it almost feels like the people that are older, they tend to use religion as a way to, to be blunt, to manipulate people, to control people, to make people, you know, do certain things. And a lot of people, you know, they idolize the, the church and they idolize their pastors when they should be idolizing God, <laughs> you know, but over time it's it's just become extremely toxic and you're seeing more and more too like people getting exposed churches getting exposed pastors getting exposed for not being great people and them using their influence to do horrible things behind the scenes and although I've never had any um traumatic experiences in the church I do remember towards the end of me going there was a lot of negative things being said about like Gen Z and younger people and I feel like there's there's been this divide happening with older Christian people and younger Christian people a lot of different communities just haven't been feeling welcomed in the church and for me my journey with Christianity and religion has been interesting because again like I grew up Christian so I didn't know anything different and you know as we're all told, right? If you're not Christian, if you're not following God, if you're not, you know, sticking to the Bible and everything that it says that you're going to go to hell. Like there's, there's no other alternative. There's no other, like nothing like it's either this or that. And so there's this immense amount of pressure to constantly be perfect and to constantly live in the image of him. For me growing up, I misinterpreted, you know, what a true relationship with God and with religion truly means means on an individual sense I knew what it meant in terms of again the organized sense like you go to church every Sunday and you know all of that but in terms of having like a, a personal connection in that way that's something that I didn't hone in on or figure out until I got a little bit older because also in a way too religion is also used when it comes to a uh, parent and child relationships right like you often hear people say you know spare the rod spare the child as a way to justify you know beating your kids and spanking them and you know whatever whatever your thoughts are about that method of discipline I'm not here to speak about that in particular but you know it was almost like religion was used as a scare tactic a lot of the times it, it was less about learning about the word of God and becoming like the best version of yourself and living living through you know his word his image I felt like it was less about that growing up and more so a scare tactic to you know get kids to behave and to get people to do the things that you want them to do and so for me I was always afraid that if I made a mistake or if I, you know, committed sin in any way that that immediately meant, you know, I was going to hell. It meant that I had no chance, no shy at going to heaven if I made a mistake. And, you know, obviously like it's taught that you can ask for forgiveness and you can repent. But even that aspect of it wasn't really heavily like taught or explained to me as a kid. It was just either you do the right thing or you're screwed. <laughs> And so for me, I always tried to live my life perfectly. I always tried to live my life as closely to the Bible and the Ten Commandments as possible. And what I came to realize, 
realized as I have gotten older is that one, it's impossible to be perfect, which I, I knew that deep down. But what I also came to realize too is that even though I spent my entire life trying to be the perfect Christian and not break any rules and not do anything bad, I noticed that it was causing me to, it, it affected my mental health in a way that I did not anticipate. I feel like the amount of pressure that I put on myself to be perfect actually is what contributed to my mental health being so bad because I, I had it in my mind, right? That, okay, if I do all the right things, if I live my life as a Christian, good things will happen. That's pretty much the way that it's, it's packaged. You know, when you're taught like Christianity is like, okay, if you live your life by God, if you pray, if you, you know, do what you're supposed to do, your life will be great. Things will happen. Everything will be fine. But then I had the harsh realization that actually, no, that's not how that works. That's not how that works at all. And again, please, you know, don't come into the comments being, you know, here's the thing. I know there's always going to be a subset of Christians, right? That are going to be overly judgmental. I will say right here, right now, that if you're that type of Christian, this video is not for you. These are for the imperfect Christians, okay? Okay. <laughs> These are for the Christians who grew up a certain type of way, but then as an adult, they're coming into what their own relationship is with God and what that journey is for them specifically without the pressures of society telling them how they should be and what their walk with God should be. That's who this video is for, okay? So before y'all are like, oh, well, why would you think that? Or why would you go about it in this way? I'm. This is a very authentic and personal perspective with my my journey in, in this and I, I wanted to come on camera and talk about this because I know there's probably other people out there who have you know kind of been through the similar uh awakening <laughs> if you will so you know you, you grow up and you're, you're told like, okay you, you do x y and z and, and life will be great but what I came to realize is that no matter how perfect I tried to be no matter how by the bible and by the book I tried to be it didn't guarantee anything and if anything my life was severely in shambles you know it just it felt felt like bad things just kept happening to me and again I'm not I'm not saying that just because you're a Christian that bad things aren't going to happen or that should be the expectation but it was to a whole nother level of like okay I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing why does it still feel like the universe is punishing me and I didn't realize this at the time but I think because I got so caught up in what society and what the church says how you should act and how you should be and how you should interpret the bible because I got so caught up in that I didn't spend as much time getting to know the religion and getting to know God on my own terms and you know what made sense for me I didn't have that personal connection like yes I would pray here and there you know I I always identified as a Christian I've never not identified as a Christian but in terms of being intentional about it and being purposeful about it in a way where you know it was like a personal journey to me not because my mom told me to do it or because society told me to do it like it wasn't until I actively made the decision for myself that I'm really gonna take this seriously and I'm gonna read the bible and figure everything out and interpret things like you know to my own understanding it wasn't until then that I truly felt like I was truly walking in faith and in my religion and so I feel like because I didn't have a true genuine relationship with God in the way that people have to told me to I feel like I was suffering because of it and it was like you know my mental health was in shambles like I've been, I've been talking about it for years like I've been suffering with depression suffering with anxiety things kept not working out and I've said this before too people who have been around me for a while will literally tell you themselves that I <laughs> I have had some of the worst luck bro like you know some people have good luck things just kind of work out for them I have had I've been notorious for having such bad luck with everything like it it just feels like when if something bad could happen it's gonna happen like things where it's like like I'll tell people certain things and I'm like you literally can't make this up <laughs> like stuff just be happening and you know as of the past like couple of years especially college college I think <laughs> almost took me out I'm not gonna hold you I went through so much stuff in college and I feel like because I reached several points in college where I kind of just hit rock bottom I I was kind of at this standstill of 
figuring out my faith because you're told you know when you're leading with faith you don't know what's gonna happen you can't anticipate what's gonna happen you just have to have faith that things are gonna work out even if you can't see it you don't know how it's gonna work out but you just have to trust that things are going to work out and because I at that point felt like I had been putting my trust in God and again I'm just full transparency I felt like God wasn't showing up for me I felt like God was not hearing me I for a split second really considered like maybe I just shouldn't do this anymore maybe I just shouldn't be religious maybe this isn't working out for me maybe this is all fake I had that that split moment where I felt like that because it's just like okay I'm sitting here trying to be the perfect Christian right and and I'm I'm looking around <laughs> And granted, you don't know what goes on in people's personal lives. I know people are going to throw that out there. But again, just in me speaking from my own perspective, I'm like, I know people and I see people who don't follow any religion at all or they follow other religions. They are atheists or they're just more on the spiritual side. And I see all these people and their lives are thriving. They seem to be handling life well. Everything seems to be coming to them easily. What in the world am I... <laughs> doing wrong and even not just from like a religious aspect but just in general like I and I've, I've spoken about this time and time again how growing up I just always aim to be as perfect as possible I guess you could say in the eyes of other people I always try to be what other people wanted me to be I always you know tried to please other people I would always follow the rules you know I was never someone that was gonna go against the grain and you know like no I always was told I always did what I was told I always showed up for people I was always very generous I was overly forgiving to people like people have treated me so bad and so poorly in the past and I just you know would forgive them because that's the godly thing to do and that was the other thing too it's like you know you're told like you know help your neighbor and you know forgive people and so that literally is how I live my life and it was to the point and I know some people are probably not going to believe me but I I promise you even growing up I like I I never lied I never stole anything and I, I I'm not joking when I say this like I would never lie even if me telling the truth meant that someone was going to get upset with me or I was going to get in trouble, I always told the truth. There's been plenty of times in school where I would do something. Well, not, let me not say plenty, but there were times where like I got in trouble at school or I got in trouble with my mom and I had the opportunity to lie. And even though I knew I was going to get in trouble, I just wouldn't lie because I had the fear of, oh, if I tell a lie, I'm, I'm not going to make it to heaven. Like that is literally what my mindset had been from from jump like if I don't do things a certain way it's it's over for me and so for so long I had been operating in this way of being overly forgiving overly giving and trying to be this this perfect person and I'm looking at my life and I'm like th this isn't working th this isn't working I'm, I'm miserable I'm depressed things aren't working out for me like I just I don't know what to do anymore and so I reached a point in my religious journey where I made it a point to stop being so perfect and I'm like you know what I'm just going to do my best still gonna do my best to you know uphold those same values but I'm not going to try to make myself sick and drive myself crazy trying to live up to this perfect image I'm just going to try to be my best self whatever that may look like and give myself grace in the event that I do fall short and I do make mistakes because I, I can't continue to to live my life like this and in the midst of me doing that I also committed myself to developing my own relationship with God and I think that truly changed my life and it honestly got to a point where I I had to reach literal rock bottom for me to get to a place where I kind of just put my hands up and I'm like you know what I'm, I'm done <laughs> I'm done I don't know what I'm clearly I don't know what I'm doing clearly I don't know what I'm doing clearly I'm doing everything wrong I'm just because I, I think at that point too I I did my best to try and let go of that control that I felt like I had and that feeling of like hey like I'm doing this this and this why am I not receiving why am I not you know getting the things that I feel like I deserve because I've I've shown up as again this perfect Christian why why is my life not reflecting 
reflecting that. And it was rough. And, you know, I had a lot of self-reflecting to do, you know, in that. Because I also was extremely angry and irritated as well. I had gotten to a point where I'm, I, I was angry. I'm, I'm not going to hold you. Like, I, I was angry with God. Because I'm just like, you see how hard I'm trying. You see, I'm, I'm doing my best. Why do you keep taking things from me? Why do you keep doing this? You know, why is my mental health so bad? Like, why can't I just be at peace and be happy? And so as I started to kind of go through that journey and reevaluate, you know, what being a Christian looks like for me in a way that is healthy for me, I think that's when things really started to turn around. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't do because I was so tied to what I grew up knowing, right? Like for a long time, I never wanted to get a tattoo because I'm like, oh, you know, the Bible says you can't get tattoos because that's what I was told. But then when I actually looked into it, when I actually read the scripture, when I actually did my own research on it, it more so said that you you shouldn't mark your body with things that, that you idolize. Like you shouldn't mark your body with things that could be potential idols. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> not gonna do that and then I also looked further into that and you know people were saying that that was back in a time where you know there were people that would mark up their bodies like in a certain type of way like it, the thought of a tattoo was not even relevant back when this scripture was written and so I'm like okay so now that I'm actually starting to like learn more and look into it more I'm like okay so things aren't as like rigid as I thought Thought. there actually is like some wiggle room for me to still you know live my life and not feel like I'm committing a crime every single time and although I'm at a place right where I'm not trying to be as perfect again I I feel like my relationship with God has gotten so much stronger because I've been so intentional about it not even just like reading the Bible and studying it but also you know having one-on-one -on -one conversations and prayer that was something that I never well let me not say never I I definitely prayed as a kid but it was one of those things where like I would only pray if things were going bad I would only pray like every once in a while I'm talking like maybe once every couple months <laughs> like I was not really praying because I also my my views on praying was was different I oh when I imagine like prayer it was always through the lens of like a preacher where you know it's very like intense but no sometimes prayer can literally just be having a conversation and just talking normally and then once I came to realize that I started praying more often and literally I want to say a year to this day actually I've been consistent with praying every single night I don't go a night without praying well there actually were some nights where I didn't just because like because I'm a very like routine person right so for me I go into bed you know I get in the bed every single night and I pray but if I'm like out of town or something like that I may not always remember to do it especially if I'm like <laughs> you know like with other people in the room I, I may not um mostly just because I I tend to forget because I'm, I'm out of my routine but for the most part like I pray every single night and I make it a point to not only pray because things are going bad and because I want something changed but then also thanking God for the good things that are happening in my life practicing gratitude people talk about practicing gratitude all the time and I think that's my version of it my version of practicing gratitude is that every single night I thank God for the good things that are happening in my life even if it's just as simple as thank you for waking me up today thank you for allowing me to eat food today like even something as small as that I try to do that every single night and it really has changed my life and again through this journey it's really made me realize that prioritizing a personal relationship with God for me has been more valuable than trying to live up to this perfect image that's constantly pushed in the in the Christian community like everything from again you can't get tattooed you can't get piercings you can't you shouldn't show too much skin you shouldn't curse you shouldn't lie you shouldn't have sex before marriage like all those things that are like heavily heavily pushed onto people not to say that you shouldn't try to not do those things or there are certain things that you shouldn't or certain values that you shouldn't up whole but just also giving yourself grace that you're not a perfect person and even if you do make missteps in those areas it still doesn't make you any less of a Christian and it doesn't negate your relationship and your journey in that and that's something that I've come to realize and honestly it's been a huge weight lifted off of my shoulders coming to that realization of like okay as long as I have a personal relationship with God as long as me and him cool <laughs> as long as we're tight I'm, I'm straight and I can honestly say that all Although there's still a lot of things 
in my life that may not be working out or you know my life may not be where I would like it to be where I prayed for it to be I will say more, more often in the past year since I've been actively praying every single night I've definitely seen changes happen in my life things that were not in my control things that I could have never guessed or initiated like things that truly I'm like oh yeah this came from God like whether it's people that have come into my life opportunities that have come my way like there have been so many things that have just been slowly coming my way like small things that have been coming my way or things that have worked out at the last minute like I had jury duty <laughs> a couple months ago and I was extremely anxious and extremely nervous about it and then the, the day before all of my jury dates got uh cancel and it literally i'm like that was god <laughs> like it'd be little stuff like that or even shoot graduating college i had literally failed one of my classes and i sent an email to my professor about it like seeing if there was anything that i could do because this i literally needed this class to graduate and this was my last semester in college and this was a professor that is known to let people fail by a half of a point and again by the grace of god she gave me a c and i passed she never does that she never does that and it's little stuff like that where i'm like okay because my relationship with god is getting stronger he's been looking out for me and that's not to say that he's never looked out for me but i'm 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 seeing it more and it's it's been like a more like present thing for me because i've been so intentional with it versus when i was a child you know i'm just doing what my mom tells me to do i'm doing what the church is telling me to do i'm not doing this because because I actively want to be doing this but it's, it's something about hitting rock bottom where you're like I don't know what else to do but turn to God at this point like I have no other options I am at rock bottom there is no I have nothing left I have nothing left to give all I have to give is my relationship with him again even though things in my life have still been up and down I'm still going through a lot of things that I am still trying to process things that I feel like I don't really deserve to be going through I will say like it's in those little moments where I'm like okay God is here he is hearing me to some extent um um, <laughs> you know, but that that's something that I continue to work on on a day to day. And so, you know, it is interesting. And even the whole point of there's people out there who, you know, they aren't Christians, they don't follow any religion, or they're more on the spiritual side, or they're into astrology, whatever the case may be. I see people like that, right? I don't judge them. I don't condemn them. That's another thing too. I notice that a lot of Christians are very judgmental in that way. And that's never been me. I've never been a type of Christian to judge people based off of their lifestyle and what they choose to do or who they choose to be with like that's never been me and so you know I see people out here you know figuring out their own way and how they want to go about living their life and I'm not gonna lie I have had interest in that but you know I'm sure a lot of Christians out there have seen people say like anything that's not of God and anything that's not of the Bible is of the devil <laughs> and you have to stay away from it but then I look at some of these things right and like obviously people who are atheists or who are anti-religion you know obviously those people don't align with my my views right but people who are like into astrology and spirituality people are quick to say oh that's not of god and it's going against your religion you have to pick one or the other but my whole thing is like a lot of those other type of practices they're rooted in things that come from god like astrology is looking at the stars and the moons where did the stars and the moons come from god <laughs> uh herbalism where did the herbs come from the earth where did the earth come from god <laughs> you know and you see a lot of people too kind of combining spirituality with religion because there are a lot of like intertwining that happens there too and so you know i've been a little bit curious about those things because you know again like it's I don't, for me at least it's not about putting these things above god it's more so trying to find other ways of connecting and enhancing that relationship and finding a balance right you know i don't know but I, I just wanted to come on camera and, and talk about this because it's something that has been on my mind. It's something that I wanted to discuss with you all. Um, again, I know a lot of people are not religious. And hey, I, I respect your decision. I completely understand you know church trauma and religious trauma so i don't judge i don't 
try to push people into being religious and into being christian i have plenty of friends who are not christian and aren't religious at all and i don't look at them any different um they're still some of the most amazing people that i have in my life still very kind and you know what i mean so i don't judge people off of that so please don't think that this video is me trying to convince anybody of every of anything this is just more so me speaking to the ones that are you know identify as christian have lived their life as christian and if they can relate to anything that i've experienced as a christian because you know it's these are the type of topics that are kind of hard to talk about in the christian community if i'm being honest a lot of these topics are kind of shunned away and you know a lot of people when it comes to religion it's a very individual experience and as it should be you know it should be an individual experience but i think it's also nice to have a community of people that you can kind of talk about these things with because no i don't think anyone's religious journey has been perfect and it's i'm curious to hear how other people have navigated that especially from being a child and growing up in the church and growing up with religious parents versus as an adult when you're kind of making your own decisions and you're figuring out what that looks like for you and what path you decided to go in and so i'm really curious to hear anyone's thoughts out there that could relate to anything that i said or have anything to add to this conversation so let me know in the comments down below also this sweatshirt is from my clothing brand so if you guys like this sweatshirt feel free to check it out on my merch shelf on my channel which is always linked on every single video or if you go into the top comments of any of my videos i typically have it linked as the first comment um but yeah make sure you guys check out my clothing line and as always if you guys like this video make sure you guys go ahead give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next video